Good morning and welcome to our service at Bobbin. Um, if you don't recognise my face, I'm Sue. I have the privilege of leading a church at Bobbin. And um, as things are changing, um, we've got thing, new things to look forward to, new things to think about. And hopefully um, today, 12 o'clock, um, between 12 and 1, we'll be able to meet together um, outside, social distancing, um, in the churchyard at Bobbin. You need to bring your own picnic, your own drink, um, your own chairs, um, good idea to bring some hand sanitizer um, and hopefully see some of you at least at Bobby Nay to be the first time we've been able to meet together in person for a long time now. Um, and we will be starting with um, some small online services in August, which you will need to book for. Um, and hopefully you've received um, an email about that. If you haven't, contact um, me um, via the church website um, and you'll be able to get details of all that's happening in, in the weeks to come. But next week, um, the 2nd of August, um, quite a few people would normally be away at a big Christian celebration called New Wine. And New Wine normally happens on a showground. Um, you take your welly boots, you take your tents and your caravans. Um, but this year, um, because of get big gatherings aren't allowed, New Wine is coming to us and it's called New Wine Breaks Out. And so from Thursday evening at 7.30 right through to Monday, um, there's going to be New Wine Celebrations teaching all live streamed. Um, and you'll be able to watch things while they're happening or you'll be able to catch up with them on YouTube um, later on. I'm going to put the web address up for you on, on the screen um, during the service so that you will be able to log in. And during the week, I'll send out an email with all the details for the programme. Um, it's a fantastic opportunity to share in their worship and that's why we'd like all of us to join in next Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Instead of streaming our own service, um, we'd like you to join in with New Wine, join in with churches from all over the country um, to enjoy some of that teaching and worship. Um, and there will still be just a, a very short update. I'll be doing a short update next week just to make sure we keep in touch. And I'll be sending out email with details um, of all that's happening with New Wine. Um, and if you need further details for the weeks to come, it will be coming out. So this morning, um, we're going to be thinking about the kingdom of God. And it's a good thing to focus on because in the world we're in at the moment, um, our earthly kingdoms are being shaken. All sorts of things are up in the air. People are anxious, as we thought about last week. Um, and we need things to look forward to. And the kingdom of God, we are part of God's kingdom um, if we come to know and love Jesus. And it's an exciting place to be. So during the service, um, we're going to have Trevor doing our Bible reading, Jan's doing our talk, and Elaine will be leading us in our prayers. And Lewis also will be leading us um, with a song. So let's just begin our worship by just committing this time to God. So, Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for the love that we are able to share. And, Lord, we pray that as the weeks um, unfold, as things change, and we are able to use our church building a bit more in the, the days to come, that you will guide us and lead us, that your kingdom would come in Bobbing, in Sittingbourne, and throughout our world. In Jesus' name. Amen. So now I'm going to hand over um, to Lewis for our song. Thank you, Lewis.
Jesus loved to tell stories, stories about everyday ways of life, something his hearers would relate to. Here in this passage from Matthew's Gospel, he tells several short stories known as parables. A parable can be heard just as a story 
or a person could go a bit deeper to search for a meaning. It is an effective way of getting the message across, of getting a person to think about their own life. Parables can capture the hearer and bring them into the story. And Jesus was indeed a very good storyteller. So he begins, the kingdom of heaven is like a mighty plant grown from the tiniest seed or yeast growing in flour or finding treasure of great value or fishing with a net in the sea and catching all kinds of fish until the net is full. Now the mustard seed is the smallest seed a farmer would use. And Jesus used this parable to show that the kingdom has small beginnings, but will grow and produce great, great results. So much so that it provides shelter for many birds. Or the yeast, or leaven, here again as a positive symbol for growth. By itself, flour, yeast, water can do nothing. But together, it makes a lovely loaf to eat. The kingdom would grow and have a great impact on the world. Now the kingdom is more valuable than anything you can have. And the man who discovers this treasure, when he realises its great value, will sell all he has to purchase it. Now when fishermen throw out their nets into the sea, they have no idea what they will catch. Whether the fish will be good or not so good, whether they'll be crabs or sprats. But in order to fish, you must be obedient and cast the net. You really won't know what sort of fish you will catch. But what does this mean? We cannot di dictate who has, who is part of the kingdom and who is not. This is up to God. But like every parable, there is much more to learn and to understand. So supposing that this tiny seed, the smallest seed of all, is the seed of faith. And God sows this seed in your heart. You have been chosen to receive it, chosen even before you were born or thought of. And that seed begins to grow in your life. And the yeast is the Holy Spirit, moving slowly but surely through your life, bringing nourishment for the seed and everything around. This is your daily bread. And supposing one day, when the time is right, Jesus himself invites you to go fishing. And you, just like those first disciple fishermen, fish to become fishers of men. Not knowing where this adventure will take you, or what sort of fish you will find. And all of this time, your faith is getting stronger, growing deeper, and becoming firmer. And then, by chance, you find the greatest treasure of all, the pearl of great price. Someone who is priceless, precious beyond measure, the Lord Jesus himself and his kingdom. This then is a great story, a true story, and it's also your story. It's your story and his story entwined. And what's more, it is great news. It is the good news. Good news for the hearer, for to gain this treasure, a sacrifice had to be paid. A life given and a life saved.
And what's even better, it is a free gift for everyone. And it can be a reality in your life right now. For we're told to seek first the kingdom of God. Now this is not the end of the story, for there is much more to be done. There are more seeds to plant, more hearts to win, for heaven has not yet fully come on earth. Now we only see glimpses of the glory and the presence of God. But when we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we echo the story and the song of heaven, that one day heaven and earth will be joined together in love, wonder and praise. And then the glorious presence of Jesus the King will come on earth as it is in heaven. Now this is a great ending to a great story. But if you want to know more and to find out more, get in touch on our Facebook page or give us a ring because then you too can be part of the greatest story, the greatest story ever told. Amen. Let us pray. Help us to be still and see your treasure as we bring to you our troubled world today. We pray for your peace to reign, for reconciliations of the countries at war. Help us to be united in our fight against this pandemic. Help us to find a cure and a vaccine. And let us not be blind to those around us struggling at this time. The refugees, the homeless, those who are starving. We pray for compassion that they might be helped. Help them to know what a treasure they are to you, no matter what they go through. Lord, help us to be still and see your treasure as we think of those around us who are ill. We pray for their healing the strength of the loved ones who are separated from them. We pray for doctors and nurses dealing with all those who are ill with the COVID-19. Give them wisdom and protection. Help them all to know how treasured they are. For those who are bereaved at this time, we pray for your comfort to surround them. In every precious day we have, Lord, help us to be grateful for the little things around us. Help us to treasure our relationships with those we love and with you. Help us to know you are there in every moment of our lives. Surround us with your loving arms that we might know we are precious to you. Help us to see the treasure we have to share treasure of Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour and help us to share 
today and every day. Amen. May God give you for every storm a rainbow, for every tear a smile, for every care a promise, and a blessing in each trial. For every problem life sends, a faithful friend to share. For every sigh, a sweet song, and an answer for every prayer. And now let's just join together and say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. To the end of our service this morning um, I hope um, you'll be able to join in with us at the picnic later and also um, the new wine events next week and um, be great to um, take part in that and then maybe we can meet up and chat about um, what's been happening there in our home groups if you want to join a home group I think that's still going on over the summer um, keep an eye on Facebook keep an eye on the web page and I'll keep um, emails coming out as and when um, I think it'll be helpful and don't be afraid to contact us if you're in need of prayer, um, if you're in trouble, or if there's anything we can help you with at this time. So let's say um, the grace together. For the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and evermore. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. And thank you once again to all those who've taken part this morning. Um, and to Anna for her hard work in putting all these bits of the service together. Um, and Martin is also helping more with our online stuff. So thank you to Martin as well. Thank you. God bless. Have a great week.